Hi, everybody. Welcome. My name is Mark Lassoff. We're going to have a lot of fun tonight. We're going to be coding a Google Maps application. Google Maps seems really, really complicated, and it does have a lot of features. However, if you really dig into Google Maps, you can do a lot without a whole lot of coding. So let me thank you guys for coming tonight, and let me go ahead and start tonight's project. And by the way, if you don't mind, go ahead and use the chat and let me know where you're watching the stream from tonight. Um, Steven is here from New Jersey. Suzanne, my friend from Israel, I forgot what city is here. And I'm sure others are here and will be joining us as we continue the evening. So tonight's project, we're going to be using data points from the Long Island Railroad. The Long Island Railroad is the biggest commuter railroad in the world. You can see a version of what we're going to do tonight right here in this map. And this commuter railroad system has dozens and dozens of stops. So what I want to do is write the Google uh, Maps code in JavaScript in order to reproduce this map pretty straightforward. So let's take a look first of all at the data that we've got. I downloaded the data right from here on the stops that are part of the Long Island Railroad in the GeoJSON format. Let's take a look at that. I've already got that in a file in my text editor. Of course I'm using Adam again and you can see the data for all of the Long Island Railroad stations here. We've got an Ontario, Canada, a Chicago, Illinois, and a Texas joining us. I used to live in Texas. So you can see the information. We've got latitude and longitude for each station. We've got the station or stop name, and that's really the data we need from the GeoJSON. There's some other stuff that's in here, but we only need parts of that data. A lot of data here. Now, by the way, I've shown you this before if you guys follow me, but real quickly, we can format this data using an online tool. This is called the Online JSON Viewer. It's at jsonviewer.stack.hu. And here you can see we've got all of this information formatted. What I did was I just copied and pasted all the text in there that you just saw. And I put it inside this viewer, and from the viewer, each station is represented by one of these nodes. And I can open the node here. It gives me the stop name and the geometry and coordinates. So I've put all of that into a JSON file that's called stops.js. And I'm holding this in a variable called stations. So we'll need this when we want to drop the individual pins on the um, map that we're going to generate through Google Maps. For right now, let's start and make sure we can get the data out of this JSON document. So let's create a new file. And this is going to be our index.html. And we'll start here by putting our HTML basic document structure, which my text editor does more or less automatically. And we'll call this LIRR station map app. Rhymes a little bit. The rhymes are free. You didn't pay any extra for me to rhyme that for you. Okay, so now we've got this data here in stops.js and I've also got here in key.js my Google Maps key. That's the API key that allows me to work with Google Maps. So that key.js is here. It's not a big deal if you see it, but it's easier for me to keep that hidden from you. You don't want your, your uh, key to be out there for everyone to see at any point. 
By the way, as we continue here, please don't forget to like the stream. That's going to help more people see the stream and more people get the information that they want. So hit that like button and subscribe to our channel on YouTube. That's very helpful to me and allows us to bring you more of these live streams. We do live stream twice a week, Sunday afternoons and Monday nights with new content on software development each time. Um, so go ahead and like the stream if you don't mind. And of course, feel free to use the chat to ask questions, chat with each other. And if you haven't yet, tell us where you're watching the stream from. Really appreciate your participation. Okay, so let's go ahead and bring in our stops.js and our in and our key.js to our index.html. We can bring them in right here using the script tag. So script source equals key.js, and that brings in the key file, and this will bring in the stops file. Now what I want to make sure is I can access the individual stops in order to uh, you know, get through this big piece of data. So we've had two questions come in. So Al asked, how do you get a key? Al, if you'll hold that question, I'm going to cover that in a few minutes when we get to the API. Suzanne, the key is absolutely free. As long as you have a Google account, you don't have to pay for the key. What you might have to pay for is if you have a very successful app, you might have to pay for usage, but it's in the hundreds of thousands of hits that you where you have to pay for usage so i wouldn't even worry about that yet and thank you uh mark for responding to those questions as well i really appreciate it okay so we've got our key.js and stops.js so what i want to do with the stops.js is just make sure we have the data here that's parsable so i'm going to write my own script right here because this is going to show us how we can navigate through the data. And I'm going to use console log, and the variable here is stations. That's what all this is stored in. So console log stations. Okay, so now let's go ahead and get our server going for a test and welcome Sacramento, California. Let's get our, our server going to run a test. So I'm going to open up my command line and I'm going to navigate to where I'm storing this application. It's on my desktop and it's in a folder called LIRR project. Make that bigger and more visible for you guys. And if we look in there, we have our index HTML, our key.js and our stops.js. So with that in there, let's go ahead and run our server. And we're going to run the Python server. I have the command stored in here. I just got to go through these. There it is. So I just ran the command in my command line, python-m simple HTTP server 8080. Simple HTTP server is essentially a Python program that I'm running. And that Python program is a server that allows me to test my actual application on port 8080. This is a better way to test than loading your scripts off of the drive directly into the browser. It's going to work better. That's why I'm doing it this way. So now that we've got this going, I can actually test my app at localhost 8080. So if we go here, localhost 8080, that's going to be my app. Right now it just produces that bracket because I've typed that twice, but we've got our app running. Now what I can do here is let's go ahead and I'm going to move things around so we can see our code and our app at the same time. Don't need that for right now. Perfect. Okay, so we can see our code and our app at the same time. What I'm going to do is now look at the console for this by going up here into the three bars in Chrome to my dev tools and the developer tools option. And notice down here it's output this object. This is exactly what I wanted to see. Note here this is all of the station data that is right here in raw form. 
right? This is all the data. And it's now in the browser's, what's called the document object model or the browser's memory. So we have all of that data available to us. And you can see it right here now that I'm out of the way. So I can go in here and I can look 0 through 99, 100 through 123. We can get the data out of here. So I actually can interact with the console if I want to to get the data. So the object here is called stations. And if I went into stations, it looks like the next level of note is features. And if I said features sub zero, that gives me just the first station. If we did that feature sub one, that's going to give me the next station. Again, I'll try and make this a little bit bigger so you can see what I'm doing. But the idea here is I've got that big object full of stations in memory and I'm able to interact with it. So stations, features, zero, dot, and I forgot what it is. Let's see here. It's dot. We have geometry properties. Okay. So let's try that. Close all that up. Dot properties. And then it gives a stop name Long Island City. So essentially what I'm doing is I'm parsing this data, just kind of driving through it and getting out the data that I want. This is exactly how in the code in a few minutes we'll drive through to get the individual pieces of data. Okay, so we're able to load in all the data from this. We've got it in our browser. So that's perfect. So that test worked. I'm going to take out this script for now. And I'm going to actually create one more script here that's going to be attached. So let's create a new file. I'm going to save it as uh, stationmap.js. And then I'm going to bring that into my index file. So we're essentially creating links to all of the scripts stationmap.js. It's not uncommon to have a lot of different scripts as part of your app. Okay, I think we're ready now to start looking at the map. So as I mentioned, the Google Maps API is going to provide all of the map data. With any API, what we're responsible for is knowing how to interact with that data or that API to get the data that we want. Obviously the Google API has maps for anywhere on earth. So we've got to figure out first, where do we want to get a map of and then display that map and then drop the pins we want onto it. Okay. So let's go back to our web browser and Let's take a look at the Google Maps API site. Where did I put that? There we go. Okay, so now we can go to the Google Maps platform. Where I am is at developers.google.com slash maps slash documentation. And here there are actually several versions of the API that we can work with. There's the Maps SDK for Android, iOS, Static API, JavaScript API, a Street View Static API, Map URLs, and a Map Embed API. Now, if you're just getting started, the Maps URLs API is really, really easy because everything is done via URLs. So basically you create URLs that have all the specifications for the maps that you want and Google automatically returns that map.
So if you only know HTML and you read the directions, you really can work with the Maps API using this particular part of it. So this is, like, like I said, the URLs API. Really good to get started. Mark asked a good question, by the way, about my code. I'll answer that in just a few moments. He wants to know why I'm putting the JS in the head. Um, shouldn't they be before the closing body tag? I'll explain why I did it that way in a moment. It's a great question. So let's go back to the Maps UR, the Maps guide here. We're actually going to be using from the Google Maps platform, the JavaScript API. So it actually has really good instructions for getting started with the Maps API. And it gives us almost everything we need to get started. So why don't we start by just displaying the map that we need of Long Island, and then we'll go ahead and actually uh, drop the individual pins on the map using JavaScript where all the stations are based on our data. So it gives us some example code here. Where I'm going to start is the map needs a place to live. So I'm going to create an H1 here and this will be LIRR station map. And then We'll have a div that will ID as map. You don't have to ID it as map, but you know that makes the most sense. This is where the map is going to live, right here in that div. Now I am like I, like I frequently do. I'm going to put around my um, around my content a another div that's just designed to be a container for everything. So let's do that. So div id equals container. I just like doing that because this makes a better parent for all the elements. So perfect. Okay. So now we've got that in there. And we're going to need some CSS for this. So let's create a CSS file that I'll call stationmap.css. Hey there, stationmap.css. We'll bring that into our HTML right here. Because it's CSS, we'll need the link tag. Link rel equals style sheet. And href equals stationmap.css. Okay, so now that's linked as well. So we've got our JavaScript, we've got our CSS. Now is a good time as any to explain to Mark, I put this in the head because the way I'm going to design the JavaScript is going to prevent me from interacting with any of these elements until a ready event occurs. So I'm actually going to create a ready event that's going to wait for everything to be drawn and then it's going to run the JavaScript. So I'm going to, I'm going to do it that way, which should uh, you know, avoid any race condition here that you're asking about. Okay, so let's continue on. So now that we've got this, next thing we need to do is we need to define the CSS for our map div. Now if you look here, it gives some CSS specifically for the map div. And the one thing that the div that's going to hold your map requires is a height. So let's go into our code and let's put this div here in the CSS. We'll use the selector for the map div. And let's give this a height of 80%, a width of 100%. And I'm also going to go ahead on my container. I'm simply going to set a margin of 10 pixels all the way around. Okay, so that little bit of CSS will get us started. So we've set up the CSS for our map right here. We've given it a height, which is required. We've given it a width. So now if we look at the sample code here, we've got to go ahead and initialize the map in our JavaScript. 
And then we also have to load the script here for our, the script here to load Google Maps. So let's go ahead and add this first. So let's go to our code and this I can put down here. It doesn't really matter. So here, this will load at the bottom. I could have put it at the top, but whatever. All right, so notice here that it's asking for my API key right here as part of this URL. Since I need to provide it right here, it's obviously not going to be secret because anyone can look it up. There's my API key. I'm not sure if I'll need it later, but let's go ahead and put that right here where it says your API key. And again, this all came from the documentation. Notice it has a callback here, init map. And we're going to have a function called init map that we're going to create. I'm going to copy this because it's right out of the documentation. And let's put this inside of our station map.js. So we have a map variable and then we have a function to initialize the map. And it has here all the information it needs to initialize the map, including where the center of the map is going to be, latitude and longitude wise. So what's going to happen is it's going to call google.maps.map it's going to pass to it where our map's going to go. Document get element by ID map. So essentially it's passing it this element, get element by ID map. Sometimes this stuff reads just like English. So essentially what's going to happen is that Google is going to send the actual map to this div right here. So that's the reason that in the JavaScript, we actually pass that to google.maps.map. The next thing we pass are options, a center point and a zoom. So it knows how zoomed in the map has to be. So init map will be called when our page loads and down here at the bottom that callback is init map. I think that's everything we need to show at least a map of something. So let's go ahead and let's try here I'm going to clear our console and let's try this again and see if we get a map. So we see the words LIRR station map. I don't see anything. So let's see if we have something in our console or if I left something out. Fail to load resource. Nope, that doesn't help. Let's try it again. No map. Well, I didn't save. That also probably doesn't help. Let's try it again. Maybe that was the problem. Oh, there we go. Init map is not a function in valid value error. So it looks like we're getting some errors here. API not activated map error. So it looks like I did something wrong when I tried to activate the API. So let's deal with that first. And that's the thing when I do these live codes, you know, they're just like any error I make, you guys are going to see, but this is kind of what it's like when you're doing real coding. All right. So first off, let's go back to grab our API key. 
the Google Cloud Platform Console. And I want, where is my Maps API? Maps JavaScript API. Enable. Okay. So now I've enabled the API in my console, which is something I forgot to do. I'm not as bright as I look. So now that that's enabled, that's one potential problem. Let's refresh again and see what we get. Okay. So now we're down to one error, which says init map is not a function. And that's uncaught in promise. Google APIs init map is not a function. Hmm. So let's see here in station map. It is a function here. It is, this is loaded after we load init map. So in this case, since I'm a little bit clueless as to what's going on here, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to look up init map is not a function. So that's not what I've seen before. So I can just take the error and let's see what we get. So we'll search Google Maps, init map is not a function. It's the first one. So it's got to be a common error. Init map is not a function. So there's a couple of different places here where there's explanations. Let's try Stack Overflow. Not closing init map. Place init map in the global scope. Okay, so let's see here. So it's not recognizing init map as a function. That wasn't really that helpful. So let's take a look again. So init map is listed here. I do have it as a function station map dot js. Is that being loaded station map dot js station map dot js. That's both correct. Hmm. Here's another answer. Let's see. dynamically adding the map script tag. Hmm. So he's having a race condition. You're calling a knit map before it was declared. So let's see here. Station map dot JS is here. That should load, but we're not getting this in time. Hmm. Let's look, see if there's any other solutions for a knit map is not a function. A knit map is not a function. Let's see what else we have on Google. A lot of different places are seeing this error. Let's add JavaScript. Try here, why not, right? And I create an empty function called a knit map. That's not very helpful. We're going to solve this. We always do. Those are the rules. So 
So let's do some testing. Can I uncaught reference and knit map is not defined? So for some reason here, and I think there's probably a simple explanation to this that I'm missing, a knit map is undefined. Station map dot JS. Is it saved in the right place? There's station map dot JS and index dot HTML. Station map dot JS. And this is callback init map. Init map that matches. This is strange. Stops.js index. Okay, so we got a knit map. That runs. We get this map, but it doesn't run. It's also not. So when I type a knit map here, there it is. Uncaught reference, a knit map is not defined. That's strange. Yeah, Suzanne thinks it's encouraging to watch me struggle. Well, you know, that's part of the game here, you know, is just is is learning this stuff, you know, and, and figuring it out. And even experienced programmers have trouble. That's not even from this project, have trouble with this kind of thing. And you know, things like this happen and you always figure it out, but sometimes it takes time. A knit map, undefined. All right, so I think what I'm going to do is go back on what I said before. Let's, tr oh, wait a minute. I think I know what's going on. I think I know what's going on. I think I figured it out. In, in knit map, depends on having document get element by ID map that hasn't been loaded yet so I think actually the way this is structured mark was right mark by the way if you're right during one of these live streams and I'm wrong you can email me for a free uh, framework television laptop sticker so if I move this stuff here then this will have already been loaded because I can't use a window on load event. All right, are we ready? And nothing. <laughs> Init map. Undefined. So weird. stops.js. Okay, so here's here's the next thing we can do. Let's work from the actual Google example. So where Google gave us this example for getting started where was it if we go back to maps javascript api let's just use this example what i'm going to do is i'm going to take this example right here i'm going to put this into my code and see if it works and then we'll from there reverse engineer So now I've got the actual Google code, Google, Google code in here. Let's put in my API key, which we now know is working. That problem we solved right away. And let's again see if this now works. And there we get a map. Okay. 
So let's use this and reverse engineer to what we need so we can get on down the road. So we've got our map displayed. Now this is not the map that we want. We want a map of Long Island, which means supplying a different latitude, longitude, and zoom. So let's go ahead, let's look at our data that we have again in stops. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab one of these that I know is kind of towards the geographical center of Long Island. This is probably more towards the west, but let's grab this data here and let's insert that into our Latin long and see if we actually get Long Island. All right, so the latitude is negative 72.6503. We don't need to be that accurate. And the longitude is 40.8303. Okay. And let's save, let's refresh, let's look what map we get. That doesn't look like it's where we want. Let's refresh again. It's giving us Antarctica. I think I know why. Now we're out in the middle of the ocean. Hmm. Let's search for latitude and longitude center of Long Island. All right. So latitude, oh, because I reversed them because I don't know the difference between latitude and longitude apparently. 40.7891 longitude. 73.135. All right, now, boom. That's Tajikistan. I know we'll get this right one of these times. There's Long Island. Perfect. Let's zoom in a little bit. Let's try a zoom of 10 and see if that gives us a better result. Not too bad. Maybe a nine would be perfect. Okay, so we're successfully displaying a map of Long Island. You know, and to be honest, I don't know what was wrong before. There was some error in there, and now that I've changed things up and used the code that they provided, we don't have the error. So what I'm gonna do is now reverse engineer this and put everything back to where it was supposed to be and hope everything still works. It's the type of thing that happens when you're developing apps. Okay, so let's move our script out to our stationmap.js. Let's save, and now let's go to our index and let's attach that script again. So source equals stationmap.js. Okay, we made that change. Let's make sure everything still works. Perfect. And let's also attach our stops because we'll need that as well. Let's attach our CSS. Need that as well. Okay. So now I think we're pretty much back to where I was trying to be. I'm gonna get rid of all that. And I'm actually gonna move my styles into my CSS station map right here. And let's not forget this is my container. So container, 
and that's going to have a margin of 10 pixels. And okay, I think now we're back to where we need to be. Don't need that, but we do need to load the style sheet here. Link rel equals style sheet. Now, hopefully after all this, everything still works and we can start dropping our pins. href is uh, station map dot CSS. All right, so let's test and make sure my messing around didn't screw anything up. Just putting things back in the proper files. And it totally screwed things up. Station map dot CSS href. We're working up till that point. Link rel style sheet. Hmm. S T A T I O N map dot CSS. So let's go back. Let's put what they had here back. Let's see if that works. I bet you're tired of watching me screw things up tonight. There we go. Okay, so something in the CSS here matters. Don't know what, but it matters. Okay, good enough. So now I think what I'm gonna do is let's go ahead and look at the options that we can send to the API. So I'm going to pull up the API instructions again, the documentation. And if we scroll down here, it'll show us the map objects. And what I'm looking for is the options, the map options. So the only two, the required options are center and zoom. But there are more map options that we can send. Or are there? Concepts, let's see here. Visualizing data, importing data, geolocation. Because what I wanted to do was get rid of some of the features that are here. Let me try it this way. Google Maps JavaScript options. See if we can find it easier this way. Control options. There we go. So this is, it says it's control to drop down style. I don't know if that's really what I wanted. Reference. Sometimes the biggest challenge is navigating the map options. There are the options. So these are the options I can include here in my map. So draggable. Right now this map is draggable. I want to turn draggable off. So let's go to my code. Let's go to station map. And let's set draggable to false. Now, when we request the map again, this map is no longer draggable. And the reason for that, right, is we just want to show Long Island. And I think, I think that's as much as we can show, right? Of course, we extend the map like that, we can show more. But for right now, the map isn't draggable. Let's see what other options we want to set up here. And by the way, as we go, guys, there's a bunch of you in the room. Don't forget, please do send me a like. That really does help these videos get out there. Um, so if you wouldn't mind liking the video, that does help. All right, scale control. We don't want the scale control, so we're going to set that to false. So scale control too false. And that's this plus minus right here that lets the user control the scale. We don't want them to do that. Let's refresh. No scale. Oh, it's still there. Can't
can't zoom, did I type it wrong? Let's see here. Scale, control, capital C. Capital C and scale control. Refresh. Scale control is gone. No, it's not. That's funny. Scale control, right? It is not working the way it says it works in the documentation. Another challenge you're going to have sometimes is things don't work the way you expect from the documentation. Scale control. Initial enable disabled state of scale control. So we set it to false. We expect that would be gone. Oh, well. You guys get the idea of what we're doing here. Oh, maybe that's the zoom control. Maybe that's not the scale control. Let's try this as zoom control. Again, you know, f challenge figuring out what the documentation means. It's gone. All right, so I want to get rid of this little guy too. This is the pegman. So let's see if we can find the pegman control in the documentation and get rid of him. And then we'll have our map completely configured. So is there a pegman? P pan control. We don't want to pan. Min zoom. Dragging cursor. Draggable. Let's sort of see if there's a reference to the pegman. There we go. Street view. The initial display options for the street view control. Let's see if we can find them just to shut him off entirely. Street view control. The initial disabled, enable disabled state of the pegman control. That's what we're looking for. So street view control, we're going to set that to false. And then our map is configured. Street view control, false. So now this little pegman should disappear. Good. So now our user can't drag the map. They can switch from satellite if they want to. Oops, we don't want to full screen that. So, okay, so yeah, so that pretty much takes care of our configuration of the map. So the next thing we're going to do is we need to now go through all of this data here in our stops and drop pins at all of those locations. So probably going to want to do that here in our JavaScript. So let's take a look at how we drop a pin. Again, going back to the documentation. So maps, guides, adding a map with a marker. So this is what we want to do, right? We want to add one of these markers like that. So if we look here, there's a marker code here that drops a marker at a specific position. So I think a good way to approach this would be to go ahead and drop a single pin or single map marker and then go through the entire list of marker uh, data that we have and drop them all. So we can drop one, we can drop them all. So the way this works is we have to drop a marker object at a position on our map. So let's go ahead and just take this as a reference here. And for right now, I'm just going to go ahead and make some comments here. And this way, we can use that for reference. And the other piece of this we need is the position object. And that's right here. And, you know, if, if you're new to this and watching this, you're wondering, how am I figuring this out? It's just experience and reading the code. You'll get better at it as you go. So the position that they used here is not on our map, negative 25, 344, 
longitude 131.036. So let's grab a position on our map and we can grab it from stops.js and grab the latitude and longitude right from here. I want to make sure we're grabbing one that's actually going to show on our map. I don't know where all of these is. I think Glen Cove would be one that would show. So I'm going to grab these coordinates right here from our data. And of course, later we'll be going through this station by station. Okay. And back to the JavaScript. That's our location. So let's create a location equals lat and ours is 40.83222 and long is for us negative 73.62612 so that's the location that we want to drop the marker at. So now let's grab this piece of code and change this to location. Our map is still the variable map. So let's see if this works. See if we get a marker on here. Let's refresh. Uh-oh. Error on line 10. Unexpected. Oh. Let's get this out of here. So there was in the wrong place. And there's our marker. That's very exciting. So we have our marker where the station is. And I haven't been showing you the screen. I apologize. So you guys should have told me. Um, so we've got our location. We've got our marker. So let's go over the code since I did all that invisible to you guys. I apologize. The location, and again, this came from the documentation. The location is lat 40.83222, long is 7362612. So we are good to go. And then our marker is new Google maps.marker, position, location, map, map. So this is our location. This is this data right here. And this is the map. So we got it working. We got that one. That's that particular location. So now what we're going to want to do is loop through all of our locations to drop markers. So let's go ahead and write a function to drop a marker and we'll pass in a lat and longitude. And then we'll declare here Lat is lat that's been passed in. Long is the longitude passed into the function. And then we'll drop the marker like that. Let's take this out of here, except I'm going to need that. So let's go ahead and call this function called drop marker. And we're passing it the latitude and longitude value, just like that. And let's make sure that moving this into the function, this still drops the marker. And we'll refresh. And we still drop the marker. Good. All right. So now all we have to do is loop through all of our stops, loop through all of these, get the data that we want, and drop a marker there. So let's go back to where we started here. 
And what I want to do is let's look again at that data. So console log stations. So this should give us again the stations data here. And it's features, that's the array that we want to loop through. So features, okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a list of markers. So let markers equals stations dot features. Then we're going to be able to loop through markers. So for from X being the first station, X is less than markers dot length to the last station x plus plus. So this is going to loop through from 0 to 1 to 2 to 3. And for each one of these we need to get out of here the latitude and longitude which is going to be properties nope it's going to be coordinates 0 and 1. So we need to get this data out of each one of these stations. And we probably should get the name out too, because I'm going to use that in a second. So let's do this. Let station name equal. So to get the name, stations dot features sub zero dot and what I want to get the name is properties.stopName, okay? Dot properties.stopName. So what I'm doing is I'm navigating the JSON in order to get the data that I want. So this is going to be station name is going to be markers, because that's what we're calling each station, sub x, that's our counter, dot properties dot stop name. Now if we're doing this right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to console log out all of the station names. And we should see a list of station names appear here if I did this right. So let's refresh. And there's our list of station names. Beautiful. So we're able to get the station name, and now we need to get the latitude and longitude. So let the latitude, and that's markers, x, sub, and I think, uh, yeah, I took out that console log. Let's run this again, take a look. Oops, no. Let's save. Let's console log markers. So again, the process of parsing through the data just simply involves following essentially the map through the data. Unexpected token. Where did I screw up? Oh, there's an error right there. Take that out. Okay, so here's all our stations again. So I want to get the latitude and longitude, which is geometry dot coordinates zero and one. So the latitude is the markers X geometry dot coordinates zero right so if we look here geometry coordinates zero this is straight from the data and then longitude is going to be markers x 
geometry coordinates one. Let's again test and make sure I have all the data. So let's console log our station name and then it's latitude and longitude. Latitude, longitude. So I'm just going to make a string here and this way we should see the station name and latitude and longitude for each station in our data. Let's refresh. Perfect. So we're seeing everything. So we already wrote the function to drop the pin. So now all we have to do is run that drop marker function and send it the latitude and longitude. Longitude. So now our map should reflect. Did I get them backwards? Yeah, it looks like I did. Sorry about that. One, zero. Thanks, Mark. Good, good call. Got those backwards, but now that I got that fixed, we should see all our pins. Let's see. Boom! There's every station in the Long Island Railroad system. But we have one more step. These markers are not interactive. They don't tell us anything. So we want our markers to have a little pop-up with the station name when the user clicks on them. These markers are very crowded in here. Maybe we should turn the zoom back on. Matter of fact, let's do that. Let's turn the zoom control back on because I think we need that to be able to zoom in. So, and markers drop. Zoom in. Very nice. Yep, we also need the, the draggable so we can move around. All right, and here come our markers. All right, so now we need to make the markers clickable. This is an exciting moment. So we're going to make all the markers clickable so when you click on them, you can actually see which station it is. Okay, so let's go back to our documentation adding a marker. So now we want to do on the marker a pop-up. Let's just Google search. Google Maps JavaScript marker pop-up. This is just a little bit of code here. Info windows. Okay, I think that's what we want. Click on it. Something pops up. So, okay, so I can tell here, so this is an info window object. It's got a content string. And on the marker, we have a position, we have a map, we have a title. So I wonder if what I want to do is as simple as adding a title. Let's try that because that may be what I want to do here. So. In the marker, we have a position. Let's so first of all, let's pass the station name. And let's make sure we're passing that. So to the drop marker function, we're going to pass the station name. Position, map, and title, station name. This could be very, very simple, because that's what it looks like here that they did. All right, so let's go back to our app. Let's refresh. Let's wait for our pins to drop. Click. Doesn't look like it's doing anything. Let me zoom in a little bit. This is when I get excited and I think I figured something out, but apparently I didn't. Okay, so we've passed the station name. The title is here, but it looks like it needs a little more than that in order to have our pop-up. So let's take another look at the instructions here or the code. So this also has a content string. And it looks like on the marker, we're going to add a listener for a click. 
and then open a window. Hmm. Simple marker icons. I think I was in the right place. Info windows. All right, so we need to create a content string for the pop-up. So let's do that. So that'll include the station name. So we'll do that in here. Content string equals H4 plus the station name plus the closing H4. So that's all we want to do here for, for the content string. And then it looks like we need to create an info window object before we drop the marker. So before we drop the marker, we'll create the info window object that includes our content string that I just created here. Then once we've created the marker, we need to add a listener to it, listening for the click event. Again, just using the documentation that's provided to me, let's see if this does the trick. So on the marker, we're listening, adding a listener for a click that's going to open the info window with the map in the marker. Here we go. Boom. All right, drop my pins. Pins are dropped. Let's see if we get an info window. We do. Port Jefferson. That is Yapank. That is Greenport. Let's find the world famous Penn Station right there. Penn Station. Atlantic Terminal in Brooklyn. Nostrand Avenue. I am so excited and so glad this worked. All right, let's get this puppy up to... GitHub, so it's available to everyone, and you guys can use this for the basis of your own development. So I am github.com slash mlassoff. That doesn't look right. github.com slash mlassoff. That's what happens when you spell GitHub wrong. Let's add a new repository. for the LIRR project. From a live stream on August 12th, 2019. Today's August 12th, right? Yeah. Okay, this will be a public repository. Let's create it. The repository is created on the site. So now let's create the local repository. You know, by the way, typically you would do this well before now, but since I was demoing it, it wasn't going to be constantly updating the repository. So now in our command line, we're in the project folder. We can see the different files. So let's go ahead and initialize our GitHub. And let's add all the files. Let's commit. Complete app. All right, so our files have been added. Now let's add the remote repository online. Remote add origin HTTPS colon github.com slash m lassoff l-i-r-r project dot g-i-t and now we'll push those local files up there so they're accessible to everyone origin master so the files are saved if we look here now we have access to them you can go up to 
github.com slash mlassoff slash L-I-R-R project and get all the files that are part of this application. I'm going to erase this player.js file. It doesn't belong in there. I don't know why it is. All right. So we were able to develop an application that displays a Google map. That Google map has Long Island on it. And within Long Island, we dropped pins on all the Long Island Railroad stations that were clickable. And those pins show us where every station was. Hey, thanks so much for coming to our live stream tonight. My name is Mark Lassoff. You can reach me at marketframeworktv.com. Check out our site at frameworktv.com. And please, please, please don't forget to hit like and subscribe to our videos. I work hard on these live casts and really is helpful if we get likes and subscriptions. With that, I'm going to say goodnight and thanks for coming. We'll see you on the next live stream. Bye-bye.